Okay, so the next thing that we actually have to talk about uh, as a quick video is the factors affecting transpiration rate. So what environmental factors will increase the rate of transpiration or decrease the rate of transpiration? So the first factor that can affect transpiration rate is obviously temperature. So you can see my cross section of the leaf over here. I have two cross sections. One cross section has the leaf in lower temperature and one has the leaf at a higher temperature. So obviously in this case, if the plant is exposed to a higher temperature, more evaporation of water happens through the mesophyll cell wall it will form more water vapor in the air space. And because it has a higher temperature, the water vapor has a higher kinetic energy. And you remember that if the particles have a higher kinetic energy, diffusion rate increases. Thus, the plant loses more water. And in this case, plants subjected to a higher temperature will have a higher rate of transpiration. Simple stuff. Light intensity is a rather interesting one as well. Light intensity just means the strength of the light. So immediately students will go, oh, well, the brighter the light, the higher the temperature. I don't want you to assume that it's due to the temperature, by the way. In fact, what I'm going to say is, imagine three different plants exposed to three different light intensity, dark, low light intensity, and high light intensity, but all their temperatures are exactly the same, okay? Imagine that all their temperatures are exactly the same. So temperature is not a factor here. We are focusing more on the light intensity. Which leaf will have a higher rate of transpiration? Well, when it's dark, the leaf does not do any photosynthesis because they need light to undergo photosynthesis, right? So in that case, what just needs to happen is the stomata or the stoma will be closed because they do not need to take any carbon dioxide in from the outside air. So when the stomata is closed, water vapor inside the leaf air space cannot diffuse out. Thus, the leaf will not lose any water through transpiration. When it has a low light intensity, the stomata are slightly open. And when the stomata are slightly open to allow some carbon dioxide to go inside the leaf, why does it need a little bit of carbon dioxide? Well, because it's doing a little bit of photosynthesis. Because there is a little bit of light. They can't do, they can't, they don't need a lot of carbon dioxide in that case. So the stomata just opens very slightly. And because the stomata opens very slightly, uh, not a lot of water vapor can also diffuse out through the very tight space. So the leaf will lose a little bit of water vapor. Transpiration is happening, but the leaf is not losing too much water in the process. So that's fine. However, when the leaf is exposed to a high light intensity, the stomata opens much wider. The reason why it opens much wider is because the plant needs more CO2 so that it can do more photosynthesis. More water vapor can actually diffuse out through the gap. And thus, the plant loses a lot more water in the process. So light intensity is actually correlated to how wide the stomata will open. And the wider the stomata open, more transpiration takes place in the process. Another factor that we want to talk about is something known as humidity. Now, I do get a lot of students asking me the question as to what exactly is humidity all about. So humidity itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two images right now. Okay. And the two images over here, as you can see, one in the forest, one is sort of like a desert. Which area is more humid? Immediately, a lot of my students will be like, yeah, I know what humidity. They can kind of have a sense of what humidity is, but they don't know how to explain it. So a lot of my students will say the image on the right is very humid and the image on the left is not humid at all. In fact, we say it's very arid, all right, or low, an, an area of low humidity, okay? Humidity is just the measure of moisture or water vapor in the air. So on the image on the right, there's a lot of moisture in the air because you can see the mist. It's so misty, right, and foggy, which is formed due to the condensation of the water vapor. 
And on the image on the left, you can kind of imagine the air is extremely dry because there's not much moisture. So the image on the left has a low humidity and the image on the right has a high humidity. And humidity is not necessarily related to temperature. Because, for example, you can have a very cold environment too, as, I've shown, as I'm showing you here, and that very cold environment can be quite dry as well. So humidity is not necessarily linked with temperature all the time, by the way. Therefore, humidity is just the measure of moisture in the air. So what does this have to do with transpiration? So imagine a leaf exposed to low humidity, as I've shown you there. The amount of moisture or water vapor in the air is very low. And in the high humidity leaf, the amount of moisture or water vapor in the air is very high. Now imagine for a second that both leaf undergoes evaporation of water from the mesophyll cell wall and they form water vapor inside the leaf air space, as I'm circling over there for you. In which leaf will it undergo a higher rate of transpiration? So you have to mull this over and consider something known as a concentration gradient. You must compare the water vapor concentration inside the leaf and outside the leaf. For the diagram on the left, the amount of water vapor inside the leaf is very high and the concentration of water vapor outside the leaf is very low. Thus, they will have something referred to as a very steep concentration gradient. And when the concentration gradient is extremely steep, diffusion will happen at a higher rate and therefore the plant loses more water through transpiration. But on the right side, however, the concentration of water vapor inside the leaf is high and outside the leaf is also quite high as well. Therefore, the concentration gradient is not as steep. In fact, it has something called a less steep concentration gradient. Therefore, diffusion rate in this case is lower. So the plant will undergo less transpiration in the process. These are the three environmental factors that can actually affect transpiration rate. Okay, you must know all three factors and how they affect transpiration rate in detail.